There is a shift in therapy and how people see stuttering, both by people around us, but also by therapists. More and more clinicians acknowledge that it's not just about aiming for fluent speech, but instead aiming for a happy life. And the next speaker uh, is an Anita, um, she's a fantastic role model for the uh, for the uh, stuttering community, um, and she's been involved in uh, in the stuttering world for many many years. Um, so she's got a huge um, uh, pleasure uh, chest of her expertise, um, and she's also a very good friend of mine. Uh, so Anita, the floor is yours. Thank you, Gareth. That was an, an amazing pre presentation. I wasn't ex expecting that. Thank you. Um, I will just see see if I can share share my screen here. Here we go. This is me. Um, my name is 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 Anita Blom, and I'm born in the Netherlands, but I've been living in Sweden for over thirty years now. When I heard about Stutterfest, I was very pleased. 20 hours of getting inspired by what other people and organizations are doing. I wasn't even planning on presentation myself this time, as people might have seen my face enough this past year, where the pandemic took us online. But when Tom invited me to speak on the theme Better Together and what that means to me, so many thoughts came into my head, I couldn't say no. And hey, who can say no, no to Tom, right? So I'll start with some slides on the lighter side, but we'll move on to some more serious stuff. So join me on my journey. And I couldn't care less that I stutter, but I'm using notes today as otherwise I need 60 minutes to, to say what I want to say in 20 minutes. Many of you will have heard my story of being very lonely and bullied when I was young, as my stutter wasn't accepted by my schoolmates nor my teachers and nor my parents. The bullying went from physical to mental in a way that nobody spoke to me and I was not allowed to join in any game or party. So what literally kept me alive was playing in five different bands. Bands were my voice. And through music, I could express myself. And through the bands, I was one of the team. My instrument, the saxophone was important. And me being there was important, not only for me, but also for the band, because we were better together and in harmony when we all are present. When I was 27, I found the stuttering community, 27. And for the first time in my life, I felt totally accepted. There were people like me. There were people who got it. So I joined every stuttering association, locally, nationally, and internationally. And I became a board member to all of these. I also joined every chat group on stuttering and later on every social media group and found the most amazing, inspiring person who helped me to regain my self-esteem and self-worth. Now, I no longer have a life because of all these groups, but I found myself and I found my voice and I found my tribe because we are better together. And after, after meeting people who study in my area, and that same year on national level, the biggest event was the World Congress in Sweden in 1995. People from all over the world, one big mix of languages and colors and religions, people who stutter, clinicians, parents, you name it and all united by one thing, stuttering. So I still remember that moment at the World Congress in South Africa in 1998. There was this group of young Africans entering the dining room and who didn't know where to sit. So we waved and invited them to our table. And they were confused saying, but we are black and you are white. 
And that was the beginning of a beautiful friendship. And we have been singing and dancing all night long together. As there, we were all the same, all thanks to our stutter. And also still, still meet parents and, and even SLPs who, who want to come to our stuttering events, but who are, who are afraid to be there. But you are our biggest support. So of course you're welcome. You are our allies. And isn't it amazing to come to an event where we're no longer clinician and client, but just Henry and Jane, where we all share experiences and emotions and tears and laughter, where we learn, learn to dance the tango and belly dancing and all feel nervous to speak at the open mic and all shed tears of pride when children who started perform their play on stage. We are better together. So whoever you are, you're welcome to come to Liverpool for the ISA World Congress in July 2022. And of course, to the virtual Nordic seminar on the 4th of September this year, to which we'd like to invite you all. And if you missed our presentation about Nordic cooperation earlier this morning, and how we'd love to cooperate with you, do get in touch. For wouldn't it be great if we could have a buddy system where one country inspires the other and co cooperates together. These were the pictures I was supposed to show you, which there's, there's the one from South Africa, which was, which was such an amazing memory. Um, earlier this morning, I've been talking about children camps. Um, I hosted and was a leader for Swedish and European starter camps for almost 30 years, but I, but I had to quit due to health reasons. At children camps, it's amazing to see the faces of the children when they find out there are other children and even adults and they all stutter. After dinner on the first day, the parents always ask where the children are. Well, their seemingly shy children found others who stutter and they realized they could finally play freely without holding back. So the parents weren't priority anymore that weekend. Because they felt that stuttering was the norm, they dared to open up and be like any other kid because they knew everything would be better together. And I hope that Sam's presentation earlier today is recorded because that, sh that should be shown to every single kid who stutters in the world. And even the parents coming to stutter camp get a smile on their faces, knowing there are other parents with similar thoughts and fears and experiences. They learn that stuttering is no one's fault and learn that stuttering isn't wrong. Yes, it can be a struggle. And yes, there are hurdles, but it doesn't mean that stuttering is the end of the world. It simply means that things are going to be okay with the proper support. And it's such a relief for parents to learn that their emotions and the things that their child is going through is similar to what goes through other parents and children's minds and daily lives. And to hear that from others and to share this with others gives them hope and acceptance and the tools to help their child. Once again, because being together means better together, stronger together. At youth meetings, we meet young people who stutter. Some are afraid to talk, and many keep their emotions inside as they feel no one understands. And during the week of the camp, they find out that other people share the same fears and the same emotions. They're talking about families, relationships, challenges, school, work, the future. And by sharing and challenging each other throughout the week, they learn to exchange feelings of not, not being enough into feelings of pride and strength. And by being there for each other and together facing fears, helping each other, cheering each other, and together feeling pride, they learn that they are better together. And now we see them grow into big board members and even chairpersons, aiming for their educational dreams and getting the jobs they dreamed of. They even united and started their own organization, Stamily. 
for and by adults of all ages, including therapists and researchers. I hope you haven't missed their presentation earlier, but do go to stamily.org and watch the video with people talking about what stamily means to them. I promise it'll make your day. The pandemic has kept us apart, but as we miss each other so much, lots of solutions have been found. For example, video chats and meetings. Last year, I had the honor of presenting at the Congress of the Canadian Stuttering Organization, the Australian Organization, and even at the first International Stuttering Research Congress hosted by the American NSA. I also joined a singing course, a quiz night, stand-up comedy night with the British Stammering Association, a Tai Chi course with the Dutch Stuttering Organization, the Mostenes, tea tasting with our local stuttering support group, I've been playing games with kids who stutter and have a coffee and a chat with people who stutter from all parts of the world, organized by different stuttering organizations like Stamily and the WSN. And it's amazing and inspiring to learn what people and organizations are doing in other parts of the world. And I truly hope that even after the pandemic, there will be opportunities to continue meeting online across borders as sharing knowledge and experiences with those who aren't able to attend in-person conference or to offer online therapy in countries where there is none is of great importance for stuttering associations as well as people who stutter. There are amazing examples like SLP Swella Border, the Stuttering Scholarship Alliance, SSA. They are tra training SLPs and helping schools in different countries to learn more about stuttering. Joining hands across borders makes us all better together. There is a shift in therapy and how people see stuttering, both by people around us, but also by therapists. More and more clinicians acknowledge that it's not just about aiming for fluent speech, but instead aiming for a happy life. Less stuttered syllables doesn't mean the therapy works. It can also mean that the person who stutters is no longer speaking freely, which can be devastating and even lethal, not in the least for children who stutter and their parents. Being fluent doesn't mean life is perfect or even that you're a good communicator. Politicians and doctors are the proof of that, right? And we're so much more than our stutter. We can speak, it just comes out in a different way. The speech and language therapists are now learning that the main thing to help people who stutter is to help them become the person they want to be. <laughs> Therapists like Snyder Speech are now educating as topics from all over the world. And I would be happy if sounds are switched off. More and more SLPs understand that for a treatment to work, they need to work together with their clients, listen and learn equally, give and take. As an SLP might be an expert on techniques, but the person who stutters is the expert on his or her stutter. So your client might not even come for fluency. Maybe he or she comes to gain more self-esteem or to get tools to simply get through a block or to get help to educate family members or classmates and teachers. For who says it's we who need help when it might be others who need to be fixed to start pressuring and bullying us simply because we stutter. So I wish for people who stutter and SLPs from all over the world to work together, listening to each other and both help children who stutter speaking to the class inviting friends to the children into the therapy room to help with home exercises and why not involve a singing teacher or or a psychotherapist or a masseuse in the treatment to create a multidisciplinary approach i never forget the amazing clinic in brno in the czech republic where I was invited to speak and where I met a whole team of clinicians working together with the person who stutters. Once again, we are better together. 
more and more people started to decide to become an SLP. The best of both worlds, as this SLP knows what's going on in our bodies and minds. Another proof that people started can become whatever they set their minds upon, but also that they use their experiences to help others. However, there's still ableism in the field of speech language pathology. Yes, SLPs who stutter might not be 100% fluent, but that might be scary to those who still think fluent people are always happy and successful. Now, every person who stutters is different, just like every, every SLP is different. But a person who has not only read about, but who has walked a mile in your shoes with many years of experience, what it's like to be a person who stutters, has more angles to work with. Effective communication, stuttering, and happiness can go nicely hand in hand. Again, SLP and people who stutter are better together, even if they are in one and the same person. I became active within the disability sector, locally, nationally, and internationally, as I realized that we wouldn't be heard by ourselves, people who stutter. As stuttering is still being seen as either stuttering is not a problem, everybody stutters sometimes, or people who stutter are incapable of doing what fluent people do, so they need to get fluent ASAP. Now, I don't consider myself disabled, as I do what I would do even when fluent. But when people hang up the phone when I'm in a block, when I don't get the job, even though I'm more than qualified, simply because of my speech, or when I get a low grade because the teacher doesn't know what stuttering is and doesn't give me the adjustments I need to show my knowledge. Aligning with the disability sector gives us rights and adjustments in school, at work, and in social life. It even helped me to demand and get extra speaking time for my presentation at the European Parliament, as you can see on the photo here. I asked and got four minutes instead of three, which was a huge victory, as I simply claimed my right to be able to say just as much as the others. So also aligning with the disability sector is better together. And of course, we know what happens on the 22nd of October, the International Stuttering Awareness Day. We reach out to people around us, we talk about stuttering, we advertise with buttons and t-shirts on social media, and at noon, all people who stutter in the world speak to the person next to us, and at that moment, telling them what day it is, right? And there's one exciting event going on between the 1st and the 22nd of October, uniting the whole international stuttering community and our allies. And that's the ISAD online conference. You can present a paper, you can read papers, you can discuss with the presenters. And last but not least, you can ask questions you've always wanted to ask to people who stutter and clinicians. And this year's theme is speak the change you wish to see. It might be what you wish from the people around you, what you wish for your child, what you wish for stuttering therapy or research. And maybe you have suggestions and good examples you'd like to share. So have a look at isad.isastutter.org. So um, on the on the photo that you that you see see here, I spoke spoke about it earlier that, that we had this uh, photo session where we where we were photographed in our stuttering moments and we were uh, projected on on two meter high photos and when we had this exhibition just to make people talk and to make us present ourselves just as we are in our stuttering moments because there is nothing different between me and people who don't stutter other than the words might get stuck sometimes and this was this was a highly a highly successful presentation so to wrap it up Let's bring people together, people who stutter, SLPs, parents and children. Let's all bring a dish to this wonderful smuggles board. 
And let's all add therapies and knowledge and experiences and emotions and corporations where we, where we pick the dish that we like and need. And then we sit together and share the different flavors. Just like today at this WSN Stutterfest, because again, we are better together. And if you want to, if you want to contact me, you are welcome to to email me. Uh, you can find me on on different social medias, um, also on Stuttering Pride, which is my alter ego. Um, and if you have any, any any questions about this this presentation or the presentations that I that I heard earlier about about Nordic cooperation and speaking circles, um, please let me know. I don't know about my time. But I think my time is up. So I thank you all for for listening and joining me. And please feel feel free to contact me at any time.